Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to look at the state of running Unreal Engine on a Mac in 2023. There have been a lot of things that have changed with Unreal Engine this year, specifically in Unreal Engine 5.2, we now have native support. On top of that, we also now know the details or the status of things like Lumen or Nanite, and we're going to get to that in this video. But first we're going to do a bit of a head-to-head -head comparison. This is Unreal Editor 5.0, and this is 5.2. They're running the exact same scene. Now this is not meant to benchmark performance. There's a lot of things going on. First off, I'm running two copies of Unreal Engine at the exact same time using a non-trivial scene, and I'm also video recording, so don't look at this as a benchmarking example. But if you wonder how uh, these two run relative to each other, this is a 2021 MacBook Pro uh, 24 GPU M1 Ultra for performance sake. So here we go. This is a 5.0. And let's see what our frame rate is like here. So you're looking 20-ish frames per second on this scene. And we stay pretty close to that. So 20 frames per second as we go down, 20, 20. So we, we dip below 20 a couple times. And then as the scene has less to render, we jump into the 40s and up. And then we get over here to where there is literally nothing to render. And we're in the 60s. All right, so let's head on back here. We'll do a little dip down into the subway over here. And we'll see again mid 20s we got 30 going on here so 20s to 30 frames per second which is actually quite usable um for editing in this environment this is at epic detail levels by the way the, one of the secrets to get that to work is, especially with the uh, resolution scaling on a mac what you really want to do for either version 5.0 or 5.2 is come on in here search for the words dpi and turn enable high dpi support off because this internally is running at more like a 4k resolution and that really slows things down so one of those things if you want better performance on a mac you're going to probably want to turn that dpi scaling off and you don't see any it doesn't hurt the ui or anything like that it just affects the rendering window all right so here we are now in 5.2 and let's see what the comparison is like so here we are loaded in and we're looking 25 some odd frames up to 40 30, 40 as we're going down here. So you're seeing anywhere from, okay, and now I'm saving right in the middle of my demo. Thanks, Unreal. So here you see 35 frames per second and across the board, then we get into the lower detail, 45 frames per second. We get into the area of no detail. And again, we jump up to the 60-ish limit and then come on down here through this over, we were 30s before. So now we're closer to 40s, 38 uh, frames per second and plus. So what you're seeing is, about 50% faster on native silicon, which is pretty impressive, I've got to say. So again, the big difference you're seeing here is, uh, let's go here, load this one up, load up. So here, sorted by name, Unreal Editor. This is the uh, 5.2 version here, and this is the 5.0 version. And the biggest thing you're going to notice here is the 5.2 version ships with Apple native silicon, which is definitely a nice thing. And it's it's again, giving us about a 50% performance boost across the board. Now, there might be other optimizations in 5.2 instead of 5.0 uh, beyond just running native instead of using the Rosetta layer. Uh, but again, you saw a pretty profound difference. Let's look at another example. All right, here we are on a new map. This is Unreal Engine 5.0 in action. Let's go up here. Let's turn frames per second back. Okay, they are on. And you're seeing 40 to 50 frames per second. Again, this is a much lighter uh, map than the other one. So 40 frames per second, 50 frames per second. You get an idea of the kind of performance you can expect. Very reasonable, very usable in my humble opinion. All right, again, keeping in mind, I do have two copies of Unreal Engine and video recording software all running at the same time. Now let's flip over to a 5.2 version. All right, here we go. And then here you're going to see 60 frames per second, 50 frames per second. So a little bit less of a detail because you're pretty much closer to that uh, max out. By the way, I have a 60 hertz refresh rate going on right now, which is why we're not going past that. Uh, but you're seeing a bit less of a uh, massive jump in that case, just because I think it just deals, uh, you get more of a performance gain the more load it is under. Uh, both of these are very, very usable in my humble opinion. So anyways, that is uh, 5.2 uh, versus 5.0. Again, I saw generally anywhere between 25 to 50% speed increase because of running native, which is very nice. Now, another big thing that we got, and we've been waiting for this for ages as people that use Mac for Unreal Engine, is what the heck is going on with Nanite and Lumen. Well, we got this update about some of the details going on with Apple Silicon. Now, the first part I'm going to skip over, by the way, this is coming from the lead platform programmer. So this is the guy in charge of Mac at 
Epic Games. So uh, straight from the horse's mouth, essentially, um, they have now universal binary support for Mac OS. So in Unreal Engine 5.1, you had to build it from code to get support. Now, basically, if you just install it from the Epic Games launcher and you're using an M1 or an M2 powered device, you will automatically get the new version. And as we saw from the earlier stuff, it does give you performance gains. It also gives you battery gains and so on. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, running this level on battery, just doing some light editing, you can get about two two hours or so um, of performance. And the one nice thing with a Mac is when you unplug it, you don't lose any battery. Whereas if I try to run this on my um, 3070 GPU uh, laptop on the PC side, unplug it, it's just useless. So uh, that is definitely one of the nice changes. And being native should result in just a little bit better battery life, maybe five or 10%, not a huge jump there. So what is going on for Unreal Engine otherwise, other than native silicon support? Well, they do have something else with that, so they're going to change the minimum system requirements with Unreal Engine 5.2. You're going to need to have a minimum of uh, Mac OS 12.5 Monterey or higher. Um, also, you're going to have the minimum version of Xcode 14.1. Now, another side effect of this is actually it's going to make some of the assets on the Unreal Engine marketplace uh, more available. Uh, so with these changes and the added requirements for marketplace assets, Mac OS users running Unreal Engine 5.2 will now have access to more assets on the Unreal Engine marketplace. That includes Epic Games free assets. Uh, such as the Paragon Asset Pack. So that's nice. You're going to have more availability on uh, the Unreal Engine Marketplace. But there's still the biggest question. What about um, the whole, you know, uh, Nanite and uh, Lumen situation? Well, here you can see the limitations of macOS support on Unreal Engine right now. With Nanite, Nanite relies on image atomics and forward progress guarantees that M1 devices may not support. That's a little weird, strange kind of wording. Uh, experimental support is available for M2-based Macs, but disabled by default. Enabling it comes with some caveats. Uh, details are below. Uh, hopefully, and this is the key thing here, hopefully uh, enable a Nanite for Apple Silicon devices in the future. But for now, it is unsupported. So if you're wondering if there is Nanite support in Mac, it boils down to M2 has experimental support, and we'll get to how to turn that on in just a minute. Uh, and M1 doesn't, but hopefully will be supported in the future. Now, the weird thing is, I don't think in terms of like instruction set, there's any difference between M1 and M2, just performance differences. So uh, if they can make it work on M1, they should be able to, sorry, if they can make it work on M2, they should be able to make it work on M1. So no Nanite yet for M1. M2 has an experimental. We'll see the details of of that in a minute. And this has a couple of side effects. So if you use Quixel assets that use Nanite, you're going to get the fallback version of the non-Nanite version. Otherwise, they will work as intended. Hair, fur, and groom, the, the hair management kit stuff, uh, does not currently work on Mac OS. Same reason, uh, image atomic support. Um, Another thing to note, if you don't know already, Nanite is their like automatic resolution management system. You can still develop games no problem without using Nanite, but what it allows you to use is like really high detailed geometry, and then uh, Nanite just takes care of the details for you. So uh, that is what Nanite is all about. Uh, hardware accelerated ray tracing is currently uh, not supported on Mac OS. This is due to limitations. Lumen can only use the software ray tracer on Apple Silicon. So you can use Lumen. This is their real-time global illumination system. You can use it on Apple Silicon via software ray tracing, uh, but that produces lower quality results. For example, reflections are less detailed and dynamic meshes are um, visible in the, are not visible in them uh, compared to hardware ray tracing. Also, uh, anti-aliasing, default anti-aliasing uh, mode temporal um, super resolution is currently hitting software and hardware limitations on Apple Silicon, uh, making its runtimes cost less than optimal. So they're using other anti-aliasing options for now. So if you want to enable Nanite support on an M2 device, the instructions are here. Uh, it's not that hard, but you do have to build from code, uh, which sucks. Now, the other part here is the caveats. So first, First, this will only work on M2 hardware. Second, performance and reliability are not guaranteed as this has not been thoroughly tested. As previously indicated, this is experimental and intended as a stepping stone for establishing further support in future releases and for future generations of Apple Silicon hardware. And then they've got a feedback here. So quick summary here, uh, Unreal Engine 5.2 uh, runs pretty nicely on uh, Apple Silicon, especially now that it has native app support. Uh, 5.2 is definitely the version you want to work with if there is 
nothing else holding you back. Um, on top of that, Nanite support is available for M2 in experimental form. M1 looks like it should be available down the road. Again, I don't know of any technical differences between the chips other than their overall performance. I think one is just a faster version of the other. So if they can make it work on one, they should be able to make it work on the other. And it sounds like they are in fact working on it. There should be more assets available on the asset store. Just do know if you are looking to use Unreal Engine on uh, Mac OS versus Windows, you're definitely going to have some things you're leaving behind. Not a lot. Uh, Nanite is M2 only, and that in this case is experimental. Uh, your uh, Lumen, real-time global illumination, which to be honest, I haven't been that impressed with with my experiences with it, uh, but it is going to be software only, so you're gonna get um, you know less detailed reflections and dynamic meshes. Meshes, meshes are not visible in them. Uh, and then uh, temporal super resolution anti-aliasing doesn't work great, but otherwise, I find it works just fine. I, I find the performance is almost comparable to a 3070 PC um, on the go. It is a thousand times better. So if you are a very mobile person, uh, the Mac is a very, very viable option. I just do know that there's going to be a decent amount of things that you're going to run into the asset store uh, that aren't necessarily built for Mac. That is sometimes an issue. Uh, it does sound like it is getting a bit better. And then uh, so Nanite looks like a coming soon feature, uh, again, available in experimental form for an M2. Well, um, I don't know what's going to happen with Lumen. I didn't see anything about coming soon in that regard. But really, yeah, that is the state of using uh, Unreal Engine on um, a Mac in 2023. So the big question takeaway is, does it work well? Yes. Are there caveats? Yes, there are. Is Unreal Engine 5.2 faster than Unreal Engine 5? Yes, quite a bit. 25 to 50% uh, thanks to having native support. And that's about it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.